Good morning, Yellow Group, and welcome to your Tuesday Read Writing session. Today, we're going to do our second read of the book. We're going to play Jump In, and we're going to do some activities from your Get Writing book as well. So let's find out what we're going to do first this morning. I'm going to share my screen with you, <clears throat> and we're going to have a look at your yellow reading book, which is here. So we're going to begin today by looking at the end of the book, because we're going to start with the speedy words, and today we're going to read them in rows rather than columns. Or if you want to give yourself an extra challenge, you can read them out of order. Let's read them together first, and then you can have a go on your own. Are you ready? Here we go. Woods, below, little, asked, cooked, Windows, tooth, smooth, stooped, bedroom, two, boots, wear, said, my, herself, into, were, going, there. Right. Great speedy reading. Now it's your turn. Off you go and then come back and we'll play Jump In. Okay, if you're back with me now, I think you've done some super speedy word reading this morning. Give yourself a pat on the back. Right, before we play Jump In, let's have a quick look at our red words and our challenge words. We're going to read them together just so that I know you know all of these and you'll be able to read them in the story. Because you're on yellow books, they're not coloured red anymore. So that means they're trickier to spot. Let's read. Where, some, they, was, you, said, to, be, she, were. Do you remember the difference between were and where? Where with the H, where without, were. There, go, are, my, tall, call, wall. Challenge words, supper, salt, and oven. Now, can you read this word, go? Where, can you read this word, go? were. Well done. It's now time to play Jump In. So I'm going to read you the story and then when I stop reading that is when you are going to jump in. And I've just lost, annoyingly, the book that I had up. So hold on a minute and I will get your story book back because what I was trying to do was to make it a little bit bigger for you to be able to see. Let's try that again. Right, let's make it a bit bigger there. That's better. Hopefully you'll be able to see more easily now. Okay, time to play. Jump in. Hansel and Gretel were lost in the wood. Sobbing, they set off along a narrow path below the tall trees. Soon, Hansel called, Look, Gretel, a log cabin. But the walls were not logs. They were gooey toffee. The windows were not glass, but sweets. Hansel and Gretel began to munch on bits of cabin. Mmm, the roof is the best bit, said Gretel, scooping up the crumbs. Well done. Next page. But just then, a head popped out of the bathroom window, a tall black hat, a spotty chin, a long yellow tooth. It was a witch. You look hungry, my poppets, she screeched. Let me give you some food and I will give you a bed for the night too. So Hansel and Gretel had a very good supper, a fat goose with fresh mushrooms, 
and beetroot. That night, in a sweet little bedroom with a clock on the wall, they slept on soft beds with smooth satin sheets. She must be a good witch, Hansel said to Gretel, as they lay in the moonlight. But she was not. The next day, she was in a very bad mood. She flung Hansel into the gloomy hut where she kept her broomstick. Stay there until you are good and fat, she screeched. Then I will cook you and have you for lunch. As for you, she said, prodding Gretel in the chest with her thumb. Go into the kitchen, off you go, shoo. We are going to feed Hansel up. So Gretel sat on a stool and cooked bread and buns and milk puddings. The witch put on her clumpy boots and took the food to the hut, pushing it in at the window. But Hansel fooled the witch. When she asked to feel his wrist as proof that he was getting fat, he stuck a twig out of the window. The witch felt the twig. Too thin, too thin, she screeched, but I will still cook you for my lunch. She dragged Hansel into the kitchen. She looked at Gretel, spooning salt into the pot. I will cook you as well, get into the oven. I will fool the witch too, said Gretel to herself. To the witch, she said, I can't get in. You must show me the best way to do it. So the witch stooped and stuck her head into the oven. Quick as a flash, Gretel pushed her from behind so that she fell right in. Gretel grinned as she slammed the oven shut. She called to Hansel and they ran and ran and ran right away from the cabin in the woods and the wicked, wicked witch. Did you hear when I was reading the story, I tried to read with some expression, especially the witch bits, when the witch is talking. So that's what you're going to do when you read the book today. You're going to try reading with really good expression. Let's have a go at where the witch is talking here. My turn, your turn. Stay there until you are good and fat. Well done. So you can try and read it in the witch's voice. I bet some of you can actually do a better witch's voice than me. Let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look at this bit here. So this is where she's prodding Gretel in the chest with her thumb. My turn first. As for you, can you do that? Well done. I really wish I could actually see you doing that properly. So when you read today, try and read with some expression, especially the bits whilst the witch is talking and while Hansel and Gretel are talking too. You should be quite good at the Hansel and Gretel bit because they're children. So you can talk actually in your normal voice for those bits. Even when someone isn't talking, we can still use expression. If I was reading this bit, I might read it like this. The next day, she was in a very bad mood. She flung Hansel into the gloomy hut where she kept her broomstick. So when I said the word flung, I tried to do it almost as if I was actually flinging something. She flung Hansel into the gloomy hut. You could emphasize, you could say gloomy a bit like that because it's a really gloomy, scary place to be. It sounds much more interesting than reading like this. The next day, she was in a very bad mood. She flung Hansel into the gloomy hut where she kept her broomstick. That's fine reading like that when you're first reading the story because you're having to sound the words out. But on the second and third read, if you can read with some expression, it sounds so much more exciting. Sometimes I call it anti-robot reading, which means not reading like a robot would. So 
It's your turn to read the story. You can either read the whole book aloud yourself with expression, or if you really want to practice your expression, you could maybe read a page each with someone at home so that you read a shorter amount of the story, but you get to read it with some really good expression. It's up to you. You decide, then come back, and we're going to do our whole sentence for today. Pause the video, have a read, and I'll see you soon. Okay, if you're back with me now, it's time for our hold a sentence. Our hold a sentence today is something that the witch says it is. Stay there until you are good and fat. Stay there until you are good and fat. Well done. Let's count the words in that sentence. Hide your fingers. Stay there until you are good and fat. Are you ready? How many words? Show me. Eight. Each time you say a word, put a finger down. Are you ready? Stay there until you are good and fat. Brilliant. Well done. You're going to help me write the sentence first, and then you're going to have a go at doing it in your Get Writing book. Stay there until you are good and fat. Well, what do I need first of all at the start of the sentence? I need my capital letter. So, capital letter S. Fred talk, stay. S a stay there. There is a red word. Can you remember how to spell it? Spell it. T H E R E. Stay there until. Until has two syllables, un, until. So we could break it down like that. We could do un first, a, uh, n, and then till. If or until, but make sure when you're writing till, you're writing it with um. It has to be joined on because it's one word, two syllables. Stay there until you. Y O U R A R E. Good, Fred Talk. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good. And until you are good and fat. Uh, fat. Now, I think the witch is screeching this. Stay there until you are good and fat. So what could I use at the end of the sentence? to show that the witch is probably saying it quite loudly and screechily. Well, I'm going to use an exclamation mark. In the checkbox in your Get Writing book, let's have a look at it and see whether it uses an exclamation mark or a full stop. I think it uses a full stop. I'm going to have to get that back up again because it's closed, isn't it? Okay, it says a full stop. It reminds you to use a full stop, but I'm going to say, change that into an exclamation mark, because I think it looks much better, this sentence, with an exclamation mark. Stay there until you are good and fat, exclamation mark. It's your turn now to write the sentence. Use the checkbox in your Get Writing book, <coughs> excuse me, to help you. So it reminds you to use capital letter S. So tick the capital letter S and tick where you've used it. It reminds you to use finger spaces. So tick the word finger spaces and tick a finger space that you've used in your sentence. Let's do it one more time. Stay there until you are good and fat. Brilliant. When you've finished your sentence, come back and then we'll mark it together. Okay, if you're back with me now, it's time to mark your sentence. Here we go. Stay. Tick if you spelled stay correctly. 
there, tick for there, until, tick for until, you, tick for you, R, tick for R, good, tick for good, and, tick for and, fat, tick for fat, bonus tick for exclamation mark, and I'm also going to give you one for the red word, there, because that's a tricky one to spell. If you need to fix your sentence, you can pause the video now. Otherwise, we're going to have a look at the next thing to do in our Get Writing book. Right, let me share my screen with you and then we can have a look at your Get Writing book. Okay, so we're going to look at this section that says grammar. It says underline all the nouns in the sentences below. Now, so far, we've looked at verbs and we've looked at adjectives. A verb, remember, is a doing word. It's an action. So it could be clap. It could be jump. It could be hop. It could be step. It could even be something like think, something that you don't actually have to move to do. We've also looked at the bare verbs. We've also looked at adjectives, remember. I've often encouraged you in your writing to use adjectives to describe things. So if I was to describe my pen, I could say it's blue and smooth. Blue and smooth are adjectives. But today we are looking at nouns. Now nouns are places, people, or objects, places, people, or objects. So the noun in this instance, or in this case, is the pen, because it's the object, it's a thing. Another thing is my book that I use to write on, that I put my paper on. So book is a noun as well. Your name is a noun, it's called a proper noun. So whatever your name is, that's a noun too. House, bedroom, bathroom, they are also nouns because they are places. So let's have a look at this first sentence and see if we can spot the nouns. Let's read it together first. The witch had a tall black hat and a spotty chin. Have a think with someone at home. Tell them your ideas. I think there are one, two, three nouns in this sentence. Remember, people, places, or objects, things. Can you spot the three nouns? Okay, let's have a look together. First of all, can we see a noun that is a person? Well, yes, we can. Here's one. Which, the which is a person. So which is a noun, because remember, they can be people, places, or objects, things. So which is a noun? Right. Can we spot any places in this sentence? The witch had a tall black hat and a spotty chin. Are there any places in there like woods, house, bathroom, kitchen, school? No. Now let's look for objects or things. Are there any objects or things in that sentence? Oh yes, hat. Hat is a thing. Hat is an object. And another one, this thing, this object is part of your body. What is it? It is a chin. So the three nouns in this sentence are which, hat, and chin. Black and spotty are adjectives. They describe the noun. Chin is the noun. Spotty is what the, the noun is like, what the chin is like. Hat is the noun, 
Black is what the hat, the noun hat, is like. Right, I'd now like you to find the nouns in sentences two, three, and four. You can either underline them or circle them. Remember, people, places, objects, or things. When you think you found them, come back and we'll go through the answers. Okay, if you are back with me now, let's have a look at sentence two. They had a fat goose with fresh mushrooms and beetroot. The nouns that you should have chosen are goose, that's an animal, so it's a thing, an object. Well, it's a thing, not really an object, <laughs> an animal. Um, mushrooms and beetroot. They are the three nouns, goose, mushrooms, and beetroot. They are all really things, they're things. Hansel fooled the witch. Hmm, tricky one. Well, witch is a noun, it's a person. We already know that from the first sentence. But do you remember I said that your name could be a noun as well? That it was a proper noun. Well, we've got a name here. It's Hansel. So you should have underlined or circled Hansel as well. So the nouns are Hansel, the proper noun, that's a person, and which, that's a person too. Okay, the last one. There are four nouns in this sentence. Let's start with the nouns that are proper nouns. We've got Hansel again. That's a proper noun, it's a name, it's a noun. And Gretel, Gretel is the other proper noun. Then we have got two places. We've got the cabin, although that could really be an object as well. We've got the noun cabin and we've got woods as well. And in this story, both of those are places. It's the cabin, that's a place, and the woods, that's a place too. So there were four nouns, Hansel, Gretel, cabin, and woods. Right, let's have a look at our next activity, the vocabulary section. It says, circle the correct meaning of the words in bold in the sentences below. So the words in bold are the ones that are in a slightly darker type. So you can see this is lightish and this is a bit darker, it's thicker writing. Bold is normally thicker and darker. So which of the words underneath means the same as this word? To find your answer, it's better to read the whole sentence rather than just the word in bold. Let's read the whole sentence together. Are you ready? One, two, three. I will fool the witch too. So in this sentence, does the word fool mean the same as cook, trick, or push? The best way to find your answer is to put it into the sentence, I will cook the witch too. Well, she did try and cook the witch, but cook doesn't mean the same as fool. I will trick the witch too. Well, Gretel does trick the witch too, doesn't she? So our answer might be trick. Trick is the same as fool. Let's have a look at the last one. Push. I will push the witch too. Well, again, she did push the witch, but Hansel didn't push the witch. It was only Gretel. So push wouldn't work in the sentence. And actually push doesn't mean the same as fool. The word that means the same as fool, and I'm sure you guessed it, is trick. Now I want you to do the same for the other sentences. Read the whole sentence, then concentrate on the word in bold. What does the word in bold mean the same as? It will mean the same as one of these three words. You should be able to read the sentence and these words for yourself without having to get someone to do it for you. And then you need to choose the correct word. 
the word that means the same as the word in bold. Have a go at two, three and four Ooh, and five and then come back. OK, if you're back, let's have a look through your answers. They ran away from the wicked witch. Well, wicked means the same as evil. So you should have chosen evil as your answer for number two. Stay there until you are good and fat, she screeched. Well, screeched means the same as screamed. She didn't mutter it. Mutter means talking really quietly like that. And she didn't sing it either. She definitely didn't sing it. She screamed or screeched. They mean kind of the same thing. As for you, she said, prodding Gretel in the chest. Now, what does prodding mean? Did you remember my action from the video? When I read it to you, I kept going like this. That's it. Prodding means pushing. Pointing and pushing, really. Pushing with your finger. It doesn't mean tickling. And it doesn't mean pulling. Pulling would be going this way. Prodding is going that way. Prodding is going towards somebody else. So for the fourth sentence, you should have chosen the word pushing. Number five, she flung Hansel into the gloomy hut. And we've got chucked, slid and kicked. Well, when I said the word flung, I often went like this. So I'm not using my feet, I'm not kicking, not really sliding either. It's chucked. She chucked Hansel into the gloomy hut. Well done. If you were able to find the same words, the words that have the same meaning as the words in bold in the sentence. Let's have a look now at our proofread. So we've got to correct two mistakes in this sentence. Let's read it after three. We're going to read these two sentences, I should say, together. Are you ready? One, two, three. A head popped out of the bathroom window. It was a witch. Right, there are two words that are spelt incorrectly or wrongly in this sentence. Tell someone at home what those two words are. Off you go. Okay, did you find them? One of the words that's spelt incorrectly is popped. Let's have a think about why. Do you remember that we talked about verbs in the past tense? Now, we just talked about the fact that verbs are doing words, run, skip, hop, jump, think. Pop, <laughs> pop is actually a doing word, a verb. You can pop, for example, a balloon, can't you? So when we make pop into popped, we need to do two things. The first thing is we actually have to double the last letter. So it's a double P, P-O-P-P, -P -P, pop. They've done that already, P-O-P-P. -P -P. In the sentence, that's correct. But then they spelt it, if you see here, with the letter T. And we know that most of the time, when we put a verb into the past tense, we need to use a suffix. And the suffix either makes a t, a d, or an id sound. Can you remember what the suffix is? It's the letters e, d. So we need to correct popped to rather than having a t, having ed on the end of it. The other word that's spelled incorrectly is the word which. Now, I'm not going to spell it for you. I would like you to see if you can spell the word witch. And you need to think really carefully. It's not the kind of witch where you're saying, which of those is my pencil, or which sweet, or which cake shall I have? It's witch, as in a wicked witch, a person. 
So I would now like you to correct the word pot and the word which, and then come back. Okay, did you correct pot to how we spelt it? P-O-P-P-E-D. I'm sure you did. If you didn't, here it is. Now, did you get the correct spelling of which? The witch, like a wicked witch, is spelt W-I-T-C-H. So there was a missing letter T in the sentence. You need W-I-T-C-H. Right. Our last activity for today is proofread grammar. And we've got to correct three mistakes. Let's read the sentence together first. When the witch put her head into the oven, Gretel pushes him in. Mm. When the witch puts her head into the oven, Gretel pushes him in. Can you find three mistakes in this sentence? See if you can find the three mistakes and then come back. Okay, could you find all the mistakes? Let's have a look at the easy ones first. What's wrong with the word Gretel? Well, Gretel is a proper noun, it's a name. So Gretel needs to have a capital letter. She won't be very happy if she doesn't have a capital letter because she is very important and she thinks she's very important. So Gretel needs a capital letter G. The other two were slightly trickier. Let's read again. When the witch put her head into the oven. Now, because it says put, this sentence is in the past tense. The witch put her head into the oven. She's already done it. When the witch put her head into the oven. But then we've got pushes, Gretel pushes him in. Now pushes is present tense. It's happening now. Whereas put is in the past. So we need to change pushes so that pushes is in the past tense as well. It should say this. When the witch put her head into the oven, Gretel pushed him in. When the witch put her head into the oven, Gretel pushed him in. So how do we make pushes into pushed? Let me write it on the piece of paper for you. It's going to be those past tense verb endings again. So at the moment, we've got pushes. Pushes in the present tense, spelt, let's move this up a bit, P U S. H E S. Now E S is a suffix. It makes push into pushes, but we want to say pushed. It sounds like a t, but do you remember? It's E D P U S H E D. So that's how to change pushes into pushed. Right, let's go back to our screen. Now we should have, when the witch put her head into the oven, Gretel pushed him in. So we're in the correct tense, we're in the past tense. But there's something else wrong. Is the witch a man or a woman? The witch is a woman. So rather than saying him, it should say her. Let's read the sentence with all of our corrections in. When the witch put her head into the oven, Gretel, with a capital G, pushed her in. That's how I would like you to correct your sentence. So that it says, when the witch put her head into the oven, Gretel, with a capital G, pushed her in. Have a go at those corrections. And then when you've finished, 
post it onto your activity page. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of your written work this morning. Thank you for watching the video. I know it was a long one. Have a lovely day and see you soon. Bye for now.